1, the Bible says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving, make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do bless you. We are thankful for your excellent greatness. But Lord, we do not understand why you who are the Most High reach way down to the lowest depths for someone like us. God, we sure do bless you. We don't know why you love us, but we're glad you do. Help us to walk in thy love. Help us to bask in thy love. And help us to share your love with a lost and dying world. Uh, Father, we thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. And again, we thank you for being a good God. Help us now. Bless those that are working with the children on the other side. Bless those that are working with the teens. Uh, be with those that are sick. Be with those that are struggling. Be with those pregnant ladies. Uh, Lord, uh, be with uh, uh, Brother Cox and others, Lord, uh, uh, that need your intervention. God, we just pray your will would be done. Now, help us tonight to sit in heavenly places. Uh, bless us, strengthen us, encourage us, uh, edify us, and, uh, and grow our faith. And Father, we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. And amen. I want to show you three things as a way of introduction. The first thing we see in these verses uh, is an invitation to worship. Look what he says in verse number one. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise uh, to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence uh, with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him uh, with psalms. Uh, 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 two times... In those two verses, we see the invitation to come. And uh, 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 three times in those verses and five times in this psalm, uh, you see the term, let us. Uh, five's the number of grace. Uh, and before, because of God's grace, uh, uh, we have the privilege to come and worship the Lord uh, and express to Him our appreciation. Uh, we see the invitation to worship. Uh, notice, if you will... Uh, the intention or the object of worship. Look at verse number 3. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In His hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is His also. The sea is His and he made it, uh, and his hands formed the dry land. Uh, uh, the object or the, in, 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 uh, the uh, 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 intention of our worship is the Lord. Uh, I, I love you, and I appreciate you, and I'm thankful for you, uh, but I didn't come out to see you. Uh, I come out to see him high lifted up. Uh, I come out to hear from him. Uh, I come out to express to Him uh, my adoration and my love. Uh, when you sing those songs, whether it be a congregational song uh, or whether it be a special song, uh, you ought to sing that to Him. Uh, those words ought to jump off the page to you. That's how I feel about Him. Uh, oh, I want to see Him. Uh, oh, we ought to just long to exalt Him uh, in our worship. Uh, we see the invitation to worship, the intention of worship, but then there's instruction for worship. Look at verse number 6. The Bible says this, O come, let us worship, and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God. We are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your heart, uh, as in the provocation, uh, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, uh, proved me, and saw my work. Uh, we see the instruction for worship. He said in verse 6, Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Uh, John the Baptist said it this way. John the Baptist said, I must decrease, and he must increase. There's something about kneeling and bowing down before the Lord. You are submitting your will to Him. You are submitting your ideologies to His truths. You're submitting everything you stood for to Him. 
we see the instruction for worship. Well, I'm interested in verse number 2. The Bible says, Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. This is Thanksgiving week. We ought to certainly be a people that gives thanks unto God. Some of you done that tonight. Uh, and I want to preach with God's help on reasons to be thankful. Reasons to be thankful. We are a blessed people tonight. We ought to be thankful tonight for the good grace of God. We ought to think about reasons to be thankful. Can I say, first of all, we ought to be thankful for our salvation. Do you realize we ought to all be in hell tonight? Do you realize that's what we deserve tonight? Do you know that you was conceived in iniquity and in sin did your mother bring you forth? You were born into sin. You were born a sinner, uh, 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 my dear friends. Uh, uh, you were sinners by practice. You were sinners by nature. You were sinners by choice. Uh, 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 we were sinful. Uh, uh, do you realize that God is holy? Uh, he's a thrice holy God. Uh, his ways are far above our ways. Uh, uh, but in His providence, uh, uh, one day He realized uh, before He made man, He was going to have to make a way to redeem man uh, and uh, uh, that thrice holy God had a business meeting uh, and the Holy Ghost said I'll do what I can do uh, and Jesus said I'll go and pay the price uh, and Jesus went uh, uh, to the old rugged cross shed his life's blood uh, hey he died according to the scriptures was buried and rose again according to the scriptures uh, uh, do you realize uh, uh, it's a blessing and a miracle that you were born in a land where you could hear the gospel uh, uh, do you realize uh, what a blessing it is to have the truth? Uh, hey, and God spoke to your heart, uh, and you by faith accepted the Lord, uh, uh, repented and trusted in Christ, uh, got born again, birthed into the family of God. Uh, hey, uh, you're no longer a sinner. Uh, you're a child of God. Uh, you've been washed from your sins. Uh, uh, you've been pardoned by that debt you owe that you could not pay. Uh, what a blessing to be saved tonight. Uh, we have caused to be thankful. Uh, we have cause to rejoice. Uh, we have a cause to sing. Uh, we have a cause to point uh, uh, to the God of glory and say, Blessed be the Lord. Uh, uh, we ought to be thankful for our salvation. Never take for granted that you're saved. If there's anything you ought to understand after this year is that the government can take away a lot of things from you but they can't take away your salvation. Huh? Why? Because Jesus has it secured in glory. You ought to be thankful for your salvation tonight. Can I say this? You ought to be thankful for the Savior Himself. Jesus didn't have to go to Calvary. He could have called legions of angels to come and get Him down. He didn't have to carry your sin burden uh, up to glory. He didn't have to take the offenses uh, uh, that you were guilty of and nail them to His cross, but He did. Uh, hey, we ought to be thankful. Uh, he wasn't only the Savior. Uh, he's been a friend, as Brother James sang this morning, uh, and he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, you've never been through a valley that he hadn't been the lily of your valley. Uh, you've never been through the darkness that he didn't shine some light on it. Uh, you've never faced any Anything that he couldn't handle, friend. Uh, we ought to be thankful for Jesus. Uh, what a blessing. Hallelujah. He's my friend. Uh, he's my Savior. Uh, he's my Lord. Uh, he's my King. Uh, and we ought to bless his holy name. We ought to be thankful that you're saved. We ought to be thankful you know the Savior. You know, there are a lot of people praying to to gods of wood and gods of stone and there are even some praying to Mary and there's some even trying to pray to Jesus and they don't even know who they're talking to. But I'm glad we can enter into the throne room of God. We've got a mediator. There's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Uh, we can go to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and we can talk with Him uh, and He gives us assurance. He hears our prayers uh, and He answers our prayers according to His will. Uh, hey, He takes every step with us. Uh, hey, He's always there for us. Uh, that song James sang this morning, I don't know what's ahead, but He does. We ought to be thankful that all we got to do is follow and let Him do the leading. We ought to be thankful for Him. We ought to be thankful for the Scriptures. The Bible says, The entrance of Thy Word giveth light to all that are in the house. Isn't it a blessing to have 
the scriptures. They're a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. They bring understanding. They bring wisdom. They bring truth. Isn't it a wonderful blessing to have the scriptures? I remember hearing a story of Ralph Sexton, Jr., pastor of Asheville, North Carolina. He went to Russia, and he was preaching in an underground church in Russia. And when they got there, the people had already assembled and as him and the pastor of the little mission church were walking down the steps to go into the basement, he, he heard this man just uncontrollably weeping. And he asked the mission pastor, what happened? Did he lose a child? That's the first thing he thought of. This man was crying so uh, uh, vehemently, Brother Donald. He thought that maybe he had a child die. And the mission pastor said, no, Brother Sexton, we only have one page of the Word of God, and tonight it's his turn to read it. And the man was weeping uncontrollably over the privilege of getting to read one page of the Scriptures. And here we have all 1,100 chapters, all 66 books, all 773,000 plus words. Uh, we know exactly what thus saith the Lord. We have his absolute and final authority for our lives before us. Uh, it is more than just a book. Uh, uh, this book is alive because He's alive. Uh, this book is the very authority for our lives. It gives us hope when it's hopeless. Uh, it gives us help when we're in time of need. Uh, it gives us everything we need to live a life that pleases God. Uh, well, I'll be thankful we got the Scriptures. Mm. Amazing, we were talking earlier about movies, how people quote movies, but they don't quote the Bible. You realize that we're going to be judged by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What a privilege to have the Scriptures. You ought to be thankful for it. And if you're not careful, they'll take them away. You say, oh, God will never let that happen. You don't remember what Hitler did in Germany. He burned all the Bibles. He didn't want people to know truth. He wanted their allegiance. He didn't want their allegiance going to God. What can I say? If time goes on, more tyrants raise up in positions of authority in America, they'll try to take away the Word of God too. And by the way, Bill Clinton did try to take it away. On one bill that was uh, uh, brought before the Senate, and he'd already let it be known he was going to uh, he was going to sign it into law on the back side of that bill. There was a, an attachment that said anybody that preached the Bible, the Bible's a hate book. Anybody that preached it could be prosecuted. The Family Foundation found out in the midnight hour what was attached, and the bill went down. We were that close. And by the way, that was 20-something years ago. Men have gotten more wicked than that. By the way, just in case you need to know this, Joe Biden's eight years older than Clinton. Clinton's been out of office 20 years, just in case you need to know that. Both of them deserve to be in jail. You're welcome. You ought to be thankful for the Scriptures. I say this, you ought to be thankful for the sanctuary. We even shut down them for a few weeks. Didn't it seem like an eternity? Huh? You can talk to Brother Clint, talk to me. When you had to quarantine and couldn't come, had to watch it on a live stream, it's not the same, friends. Thank God for the sanctuary. Thank God for the local called-out assembly, the place where we can come and worship, where we can gather. We got folks from Indiana, folks from Ohio, folks from Kentucky, all over here in Kentucky. Uh, 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 yet we can come. Uh, uh, folks from different jobs, different backgrounds. Uh, 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 folks that were raised in church, folks that weren't raised in church. Uh, we got folks from all kinds of economic statuses, uh, but we can come together. Uh, and when we come to this place, uh, uh, the attention's not on any of us. Uh, it's on Him. Uh, and it's a place where we can set aside an oasis, uh, our home away from home. Uh, uh, it's a place uh, that is holy, a place that has been set aside uh, and uh, uh, hallowed to the name of the Lord. Uh, uh, where we can come and exalt Him and worship Him uh, and look unto Him and find strength. Uh, uh, that message I preached years ago on going home. Home is the sacred, the refuge, the 
place where you're most at, uh, 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 comfortable. And can I say, uh, for a Christian, the house of God is sacred in our refuge. And it's the place we all, the only place in this world where we feel like we really belong. What a blessing for the sanctuary. Aren't you glad in the sanctuary there's no big eyes and little U's? It's all about Jesus. Aren't you glad in the sanctuary we're fitly framed together? Uh, what a blessing to have the sanctuary. Uh, it's, a, it's a haven of rest from this war-torn, tore-up world that we live in. Uh, I'm glad we can come in here and say, well, if you all gather, you might get the COVID. Well, I'd rather have the COVID and be around God's people than, uh, than to have what the world has. Are you listening? Uh, I just believe as long as we wash our hands, take care of ourselves, and we come to worship Jesus, it'll be all right. Can I say this? We should be thankful for the saints. Hmm. Ephesians 1 tells us that we're accepted among the beloved. What a blessing to be around God's people. Brother Phil said it when he got up to say, on the job, he don't fit in. Uh, them folks and him don't don't have anything in common, but he can come here. And God's letting him meet some folks on his journey. Huh? Do you realize we're going to spend all of eternity together? Thank God for, for folks when you're down. You can tell them, hey, I'm down, and they'll pray for you. Thank God for folks that uh, when you need encouraged, they'll just rally around you. Boy, I just thought that illustration, if you ever heard that eagle message I preach, you've heard this illustration, but I like it. I'm going to bring it out right now. It just came to my mind. They say, let me, Donald Trump's not heard it. Let me go over here and talk to him. They say every eagle at some point in his life will go through a molting period. See, an eagle builds its nest high up on a rock. And I'm glad we're built on the rock. But for some reason, they can't figure out that eagle come down off its rock and it get down on the ground and it'll start plucking out its feathers and it goes through a state of what we would look at as a state of depression. And that eagle's down there on the ground. That's a dangerous spot for it to be. Any kind of predator can get the eagle while he's down on the ground. And them other eagles, they'll see that eagle down there off its rock plucking out its feathers. And they just start flying around that eagle and calling to that eagle trying to encourage that eagle to get back to the rock. And can I say hallelujah? When you're going through something you may not even understand. When you get low uh, and nothing makes sense. Uh, you can just get around the saints of God and they'll start encouraging you. They'll start trying to get you back to the rock. Uh, uh, they'll just try to help you, uh, be a friend to you. Uh, what a blessing to have the saints of God not only to worship with, uh, uh, to bear one another's burdens with, uh, uh, to encourage some, uh, uh, to help some, uh, uh, to be there for somebody. What a blessing to have folks like that. Uh, I appreciate, I mention him every now and then, back there on the banner is Brother Frank Stinson. If you was here when Brother Frank was alive, he touched your life. He used to pray all week, God show me somebody that's down. He'd come to church, and if God put somebody in his heart, he'd go over and be good to them. He might slip them a piece of candy, tell them they look good today. He might take them out to lunch. He might find out that they had a, a problem couldn't buy their medication. He'd go buy their medication. I mean, he was just good to people. I remember that time we was out on visitation. Afterwards, uh, Brother Clint, he wanted to take us all over to Burger King. The first time you ever ate a Whopper. And then every Friday you come and was praying we'd go back to Burger King. Remember that? Huh? Oh, yeah. I remember that. You say, he never had a Whopper? No, he's too cheap. He's tight. Them Whoppers cost, back then, it cost about $1.99. He wasn't getting a Whopper. But boy, Frank wanted to buy him one. He'd eat it now, huh? He's the only person I've ever seen lick the wrapper at Burger King. Uh, if you study the scriptures, right after his conversion, Paul had a tough time. See, everybody knew him as Saul Tarsus. Everybody knew him as the guy that, that persecuted Christians, had Christians murdered. And here he claims to be one. They wasn't quick to trust him. But there was a man stood up named Barnabas. And Barnabas stood in the gap for Paul. 
And Barnabas took him around and introduced him to people. And Barnabas stood up for him. You know, Frank Stinson was a Barnabas. He's just one of them that just stood up for folks and helped folks and encouraged folks. Barnabas was an encourager. And thank God there's some saints of God that are encouragers, that are helpers. Because I don't care who you are. From time to time, you're subject to go through a molting period. But we ought to be thankful for the saints of God that don't leave you there, that encourage you, that pray for you, that are there for you. What a blessing. Then I thought about this. You ought to be thankful for the surplus, the bonuses of being saved. We're already reaping far better than we sowed. But you get to thinking about the extra added things that God gives us. Huh? How about our household, your family? You ought to be thankful for your family. What a blessing to have a family. What a blessing to... Be, have the privilege, even though the governor don't want you to, on Thursday to gather with a, not Thanksgiving, a peaceful protest around a turkey. <laughs> not too peaceful for the turkey. Oh, what a blessing to be able to break bread with your family. What a blessing to be able to bow your heads and thank God for the bounty that you can share with your family. Oh, what a blessing to be able to gather and uh, 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 have another holiday that you can spend with your loved ones. We don't know what a day brings forth, uh, but you ought to be thankful. God's blessed you with a good family. Uh, 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 many of you, your families worship with you. Uh, uh, many of your families know the Lord. Uh, what a privilege to have a family in this day and age. Huh? You ought to be thankful for our household. You ought to be thankful for your health. Hmm? Now, I got to COVID, it wasn't that bad. Now, I chalked that up to Miss Nett back early this year when it, when it started getting breaking news about this thing coming out. She started me on a high vitamin C regimen. And then uh, uh, when uh, uh, I got sick, we increased that and uh, vitamin D and some other things and whatever she injected me with. I, to this day, I don't know what that was. Uh, it, it, it pays to, to live with the nurse, you know what I'm saying? But can I say this? I didn't get all the symptoms. I just got real tired. Friend, if you got your health, you're blessed. Uh, I'm telling you, last year when the doctor said it was cancer, uh, you know what that felt like. Uh, Miss Mary, you know what that felt like. Brother Jack, you know what that feels like. You hear that word cancer, you don't hear anything else they say. You just don't know. And can I say, y'all be thankful you got your health. You say, Brother Doug, this virus is bad. Well, if you ain't got it, you ought to be thankful. And if you do get it, you ought to pray. Ask God to help you. He will. Huh? I mean, it's only got a 98% recovery rate, so let's just shut down everything. Huh? Shoot. Don't get me started. <laughs> you ought to be thankful for your health. That's just a bonus. You know, I don't know why it is there's some people that just aren't healthy. And there's some people healthy as a horse. You say, why would God do that? Whoa, 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 whoa. God didn't choose to sin in the garden. When Adam and Eve chose to sin, that's when death came. That's when disease came. That's when all this stuff started. I don't know why some people's DNA is made up or where they just stay sick. I'm thinking of a preacher from South Carolina. His wife was ill in bed fast for 30 years he took care of her he come in from church one night and sitting there holding her hand he says honey I I don't know why you've had to be sick all these years he said but when we get to heaven we'll find out why she looked at him and she said honey when we get to heaven it ain't gonna matter huh uh, I don't know why some get sick and some don't I don't know why but I do know this God's good either way. And you ought to be thankful if you're healthy. You ought to be thankful if you've got legs that you can walk. Uh, you ought to be thankful that uh, you don't have dietary problems. You talk to them Schneckenbergers. They're two little children. Two of them kids got, got dietary. They can't eat like everybody else eats. That's sad. Uh, you got people like me. If it's got chocolate, I'll eat it. They can't eat chocolate. 
Can't eat peanut butter. Can't eat a lot of stuff. See, sometimes we take for granted. Y'all be thankful you got your health, huh? Y'all be thankful you're not like Brother Bob. Got that device in your chest keeping your heart beating. I'm glad your heart's still beating. But I'm glad I don't have to wear one of them. Huh? Can you imagine them putting a heart monitor on me while I'm preaching? <laughs> They'd be going, what in the world? That guy's got, he's got having an episode. You have no idea. I'm having an episode, all right. Time of my life. I'll be thankful for your health. You'll be thankful for your hire. You got a job, you ought to be thankful. If you're essential, you ought to be thankful. Huh? I heard this. I told this to Miss Nett this afternoon. They're shutting down all these restaurants. But Amazon isn't shutting down 24-7. They're rolling on. Just follow the money. If all these restaurant owners would get together and sue these governors, they'd be back in business. Mm -mm. It's just crazy. Mm -mm. Y'all be thankful you got a job. Mm -mm. Y'all be thankful that uh, even some of you, where they shut you, they let you work from home. Y'all be thankful. Uh, we got reasons to be thankful. Y'all be thankful for your home. You got a place to live. You got clothes to wear. You got a car to drive. Shoes on your feet. We ought to be thankful. Uh, God's been good to us. He don't have. Hey, you're not living under a bridge tonight, huh? You realize there's a lot of folks don't know where where they're going to have Thanksgiving meal if they're going to have a Thanksgiving meal. You ought to be thankful. You say, well, I don't have much. I've just got a little here, a little. Be thankful for a little, huh? Lazarus won the crumbs from the rich man's table. You ought to be thankful. And I thought about this. You ought to be thankful for your homeland. There are a lot of things going on in our country that I despise. But I'm still thankful for America. Still the greatest country on the face of the earth. I'm thankful we got at least 80 million citizens that are patriots. Hmm? I'm thankful for first responders. I'm thankful for nurses. I'm thankful... For preachers and churches. I'm thankful for folks that still salute the flag. Hmm? Uh, I'm thankful for some that still say the pledge with under God in it. I'm thankful that in the providence of God, He had some founding fathers of this nation that knew something about God, and when they put in the uh, uh, ink to paper and pinned down the constitution of this great country it's still the greatest document outside the Bible that's ever been pinned down and I'm thankful we got the first amendment that's why we're here tonight I'm thankful we got the second amendment that secures our first amendment you're welcome uh, to stand against tyranny I'm going to tell you something other than California because there are a bunch of sissies out there but I'm telling you some of these redneck states these governors are only push them so far hmm Huh? Y'all don't remember 1863. There was a little thing called the Civil War. Rednecks only put up with so much. Huh? I'm telling you, it may come to that again. You say, we're supposed to be peaceful, and we will be. Till push comes to shove. There's just some things I'm not going to put up with. Hmm? Uh, David said, is there not a cause? There are some things worth fighting for. Your family's worth fighting for. Right. Hmm? Your livelihood's worth fighting for. And certainly your church and the Bible and God's worth fighting for. Right. Huh? Man that won't stand is, is sorry in my, in my, my estimation. There's some things we ought to be thankful for. You ought to be thankful that the president's got good lawyers and he's going to have another four years. You just mark her down. Huh? You ought to be thankful. I've done read enough to know he won the election. You ought to be thankful. Because that other joker gets in, uh, we're just that much closer to the Antichrist. Uh, we'll all be eating eggs and a duck that other guy gets in. Because he's Chinese all through and through. Anyway, you ought to be thankful. You ought to be thankful that God has given us a space of grace that God's been far better to us than we deserve. He's been better to us than we've been better to Him. So how do we counterbalance that? 
by being thankful. We'd have revival in America if God's people would just again get thankful for the goodness of God. Just be thankful. huh? Just show God your appreciation for his goodness to you. He didn't have to be that good to you, but he has been. And you ought to be good to him. You ought to truly let him be the Lord of your life. When's the last time you just thanked him? I mean, just thanked him for how good he's been to you. He sure is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our admiration. He's worthy of us just being astounded. But he's also worthy of our appreciation. When was the last time you just said, Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me? Miss Renee, come to piano. Well, she's coming. Let's all stand. Maybe you just want to come and thank the Lord. Maybe you need to go to somebody tonight and thank them for being one of them saints that didn't give up on you. Maybe you just need to tell the Lord you love him. While well, she's playing and folks are praying, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you seems so small. But God, we truly are grateful for the good grace of God. We're grateful, Lord, for how good you've been to us, how you have blessed us far beyond our deserving. We are thankful. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you for the Savior. Thank you for the Scriptures. Thank you for the sanctuary. Thank you for the saints of God. Thank you for the bonuses, the surplus of blessings that daily you load us with benefits. Father, we are thankful. Help us to never take for granted your goodness. Father, bless these people here tonight. Do something great for them these days. Honor their faithfulness. Lord, they've been steadfast and sure. They have committed themselves to following Jesus. And God, I pray you'd bless them for it. I have your way in this invitation. God bless as only you can. Or maybe somebody needs to go to somebody and thank them for being good and standing in the gap for them. Maybe somebody needs to go to somebody and tell them they love them. Maybe somebody, Lord, uh, needs to just share the grace of God with somebody tonight. Lord, this altar's full, no doubt, people thanking you and telling you they love you. God, whatever your will is in this invitation, we pray your will be done. Bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.